so this is the next question guys 8b uh, from the model paper so the question goes like this discuss any five applications of arm cortex m3 or a simple arm processor based on its features okay so you should be discussing the very important five applications by comparing it with the other processors okay so how it would be very affordable and uh, like that we are having five set of applications mentioned in this year so let us discuss them one by one so the first application is low cost microcontrollers okay if you compare this with any other microprocessor or microcontroller or if you simply compare it with an 8 bit microcontroller that is 8051 it is of low cost because it uses more number of bits okay so that is if if it uses more number of bits the speed would be very fast and the working uh, working space would be accurate so that the cost it would be very very cost effective okay so this is one thing low cost microcontrollers the cortex m3 processor is ideally suited for low cost microcontrollers commonly found in consumer products like toys and electrical appliances its advantages include low power consumption high performance and ease of use okay as i've told you power consumption is very less due to the more number of bits used okay because we are in this arm architecture as you know that they are using 32 bits so that's why power consumption would be very low performance is high since we have more number of bits the performance would be very accurate and very high ease of use ease of use uh, it would be very uh, essential because uh, since it is low cost the use also the using part also would be very easy which facilitates the migration of embedded developers from 8 bit to 16 bit systems to 32 bit arm architectures okay so that is the architectural uh, increase would be would uh, was started from 8 bit then it went to 16 bit now it is finally 32 bit arm architectures the design aims for lower cost solutions potentially pricing 32 bit microcontrollers below 1 us dollar for the first time it also offers greater performance efficiency and improved code density okay the efficiency would be very very high so this is one application next it is automotive okay the cortex m3 processor is an ideal choice for the automotive industry due to its very high performance efficiency and low interrupt latency okay the performance efficiency is very high and the interrupt if your latency that is we don't have any we have only very less number of interrupts okay the, those interrupts are very very negligible and you can it could be avoided okay making it well suited for real time systems it supports up to 240 external vector interrupts okay it supports up to 240 vector interrupts okay that is uh, if we have around 240 interrupts uh, uh, it could be blocking them okay it includes an built in interrupt controller with nested interrupt support Additionally, the option of a memory protection unit that is MPU makes it ideal for highly integrated and cost sensitive automotive applications. Okay, so this is one application. Next, we have data communications. The processor's low power consumption and high efficiency combined with the bit field manipulation instructions available in Thumb 2 make the Cortex M3 perfect for numerous communication applications such as Bluetooth, Wi Fi, as well as Zigbee. Okay. In these fields, you could see here the data communication uh, uh, under this uh, ARM Cortex M3 processor is very very efficient, and the communication won't be won't be having any manipulation in between them. It is very very numerous. Okay, the Thumb 2 technology allows for a highly efficient and powerful instruction set, combining 16-bit and 32-bit instructions without state switching overhead, which in contributes to the higher efficiency and code density. Okay. Next, next type of application is industrial control. In industrial control applications where simplicity, fast response and reliability are paramount, this processor stands out. Its interrupt features are basically low interrupt latency and enhanced fault handling capabilities. Okay, so this is very key point here that is in industries, uh, you could be seeing most of the uh, errors which are happening during the processors uh, running of the processors so that would be uh, having the capabilities of these fault handling okay so these are the key strengths in this domain the nested vector interrupt controller that is nvic supports dynamic priority changes and reduces the interrupt latency through the automotive automatic saving and restoring of the register contents okay so the interrupt would be very very negligible and it would be uh, uh, avoided due to the automatic saving and restoring of the uh, which is a very very key feature under this industrial control okay next is the final application is consumer products for many consumer products uh, this cortex m3 is a strong candidate because it is small highly efficient and low power processor okay since it is small because uh, due to the reduced cost the size also uh, the size also would be varying uh, 
uh, that is it would be very small highly efficient due to the more number of bits used in the cortex m3 processor and low power processor okay the power consumption is very low its support for an mpu allows for the execution of complex software while providing the robust memory protection enhancing the system reliability okay so these were the important five sets of applications under the arm cortex m3 or a 32 bit arm processor okay so please note it down these five applications focus on these four flags only okay so now let us discuss with the processor modes under the cpsr okay this is very important processor modes the processor mode determines which registers are active and the access rights to the cpsr register itself each processor mode is either privileged or non privileged okay so in the processor mode we have it is divided into two categories one is privileged mode and another one is non privileged mode okay a privileged mode allows full read write access to the cpsr the read write access is completely allowed by the privileged mode whereas the non privileged mode only allows read access to the control field okay it is it is allowing the read access to the control field in the cpsr but still allows the read write access to the condition flags okay the read the read access is only to the control field in the cpsr whereas the both read write access are uh, combined in the conditional flags under non privileged mode okay so in total there are seven processor mode in which six are divided under privileged mode and one non privileged mode okay so let us discuss one by one there are six privileged mode namely abort fast interrupt request interrupt request supervisor system and undefined okay so one by one let us see the processor enters the abort mode when there is a failed attempt to access memory okay this abort mode is uh, for for uh, whenever you have any error during the execution time of the program uh, during that we have one mode called as abort mode where the failed attempt is uh, used and that failed attempt is further used in the upcoming program and uh, that failed attempt would be very very essential so that's why that that uh, that is uh, fetched under the abort mode next we have fast interrupt request and interrupt request modes correspond to the two interrupt levels available on the arm processor okay the two interrupt levels next we have the supervisor mode it is the mode that the processor is in after reset and is generally the mode that an operating system kernel operates in okay it is a mode that is uh, used after reset okay if you want to, uh, if you want a program to be executed and the same program if you want to if you want to be executed multiple times then this mode is to be activated okay supervisor mode then we have system mode system mode is a special version of user mode that allows full read write access to the cpsr okay if you want the complete read write access to the cpsr and if you want the system mode to be working as the user mode so this system mode is to be activated okay then we have undefined mode it is used when the processor encounters an instruction that is undefined or not supported by the implementation okay then we have one non privileged mode and which is commonly used in the cpsr that is called as the user mode okay the user mode is used for programs and the application part of the arm core data flow okay so this is all about the processor modes